issues is an issue raised most robustly by my colleague, uh, I believe it's Dr. Kiyankolu, and it is a question of a political question. The second issue, my lord, my lords and uh, your leadership, will be the question of fair hearing. And the third one will be jurisdiction in the context of Article 40. Let me begin with the last one. In response to what the petitioners will tell you this morning, you will be treated to the most astonishing claim in our 10 years of the Constitution 2010. You will be told that the National Assembly and the Senate and the Executive have a dictatorship, have an autocracy on political questions, that those questions cannot be questioned by this court. That is the textbook definition of dictatorship and autocracy. The Constitution of Kenya, beginning at Article 1 and going to Article 10 and on and on to the end, is replete with the word accountability. Kenya is not a presidential democracy. Kenya is not a legislative democracy. Kenya is a constitutional democracy. When we gave ourselves this constitution in 2010, we introduced into it a concept known as limited government. And what that concept means is that those who are accorded powers under the constitution can only exercise those powers within the four corners of the, of the power granted to them. That is number one. And that number two, on account of Articles 1, Article 2, and 3, all those decisions are amenable to judicial review for purposes of confirming compliance with the Constitution. My good friend, Mr. Uh, Dr. Fiancolo and his colleagues, have in their submission cited to you a case which they have extracted from the Sonko, allow me to call it that, the Sonko um, Supreme Court uh, decision. They tell you that on the basis of a decision called Nixon versus the United States, you have no jurisdiction on account of the political question doctrine. But what they've done actually is that they cut out the passages and left out the decision that the court actually made. This is what you will find at paragraph 113 of the Supreme Court decision. And so far, it's the only, I think, full decision by the Supreme Court on the question of impeachments. Full decision after an impeachment. This is what they say. In that sense, and, in the, you know, and this is now a continuation from where um, the respondents here have cited in their submissions. In that sense, and in the exercise of these wide political powers, both the county assembly and the Senate cannot act outside the confines of the Constitution. So that's the first point. The Senate and the National Assembly, even while acting politically, cannot act outside the confines of the Constitution and the law. That's number one. And they then say, and this is where you draw your jurisdiction from, for to do so would invariably invite the court's intervention, which is what we're asking you to do here today. They then cite the case of Nixon, which itself stated that there must be judicial review when state organs or state bodies misbehave. But this is what the court says. Courts are thus permitted to intervene where matters of constitutional violations arise. And that's not the only one, of course. We've cited for you uh, other cases, including uh, the Wambora uh, decisions, where uh, the court, uh, uh, both the Court of Appeal, uh, went to great lengths to explain where you draw your jurisdiction from. So I believe the Supreme Court decision in the Sonko case should put to rest the question as to whether you have jurisdiction even on political questions. The respondents then make another submission. This is that this court lacks jurisdiction because jurisdiction to interrogate the presidency and its appointments or elections lies exclusively within the Supreme Court of Kenya. They don't say so explicitly, but they say so by, um, by way of example. And they tell you that under Article 164, I believe it is, uh, Article 163, sub-article 3A, 
the exclusive original jurisdiction to hear and determine disputes relating to the elections to the office of the president arising under Article 140. It's important to linger on every of those words. The exclusive jur jurisdiction is limited to elections, number one, arising under Article 140. And there's a reason it's worded this way. And here's the reason. Now, not every election is a presidential election. Now, under the definitions set out under the Elections Act, the Elections Act is itself a statute promulgated by Parliament under the provisions of Article 82 of the Constitution of Kenya. It recognizes only three types of presidential elections. The first is Article 136. It is that election that leads and, and that has the qualifications and the, and the mechanism for it under Article 138 that then leads to a petition in the Supreme Court of Kenya under Article 140. There is then another election under Article 139, sub-Article 1B, and you'll find this in the definitions of the Elections Act. And the third presidential election understood is Article 146, sub-Article 2B. A replacement, a, a replacement of a deputy president under Article 149 is not an election. And I must confess that Article 149 was perhaps not worded very elegantly because what Article 149 does is that Article 149 um, almost seems to have ended prematurely because it says within 14 days after a vacancy in the office of the deputy president arises, the president shall nominate a person to fill the vacancy. So it's a nomination. The word used there first is nominate. A person to fill the vacancy and the National Assembly shall vote on the nomination within 60 days after receiving it. It doesn't say anything after that. But one of the things I found when I examined another statute with similar provisions, this is section 32D of the County Government Act. Section 32D of the County Government Act is actually a lot broader. It explains how that vote will be conducted, the time periods for it, the threshold for that uh, uh, vote. It's a lot more elaborate. But one of the things it makes clear is that the vote akin to Article 149 is an approval. It's not an election. It's an approval. And if one were to examine the Constitution further, everywhere the word election is used, and uh, just by way of a few examples under the Constitution, Article 86, Article 87, Article 83, all of those articles, including the powers and functions of the IBC, which my learned friend Mr. Ndegwa will be speaking to later, all of those make it clear that the election contemplated is a contested election with voters under Article 1. 14 million Kenyans. That is what the Constitution understands as an election. That then invites the jurisdiction of the Supreme Court of Kenya under Article 140. So it cannot be that the respondents get to make two opposing arguments. They argue that because um, this is their argument, this is an election, so you can only go to the Supreme Court of Kenya. But they then argue this is not an election that requires the IBC. That's one of the things they've argued. Because an election requires the IBC, as properly understood. So even that argument that the Supreme Court of Kenya is the only one that has the repository of jurisdiction to determine this matter does not find any basis, does not find any grounding in the uh, Constitution of Kenya. You can also look at Article 1062A for what they discuss when they uh, talk about an election. So Article 149.1 does not envisage any contest. The president nominates one name. And while I'm here, let me deal with um, an elephant uh, that uh, my learned colleagues uh, will be throwing at you. It's actually more of a monster. In response to, in response to uh, what we are telling you, 
they will tell you there is a public crisis of monumental proportions not seen since the late Daniel Arap Moy told us that he will appoint a vice president if it increases the sufurias of Ugali in our houses. We were told this is the worst thing that has ever happened. There's a vacancy. Answer number one, Article 148 does not, no, not number 148, sorry, I believe I'm talking about the sequencing um, where the Speaker of the National Assembly um, is the third in command, so to speak, when there's a vacancy. I have been waiting for my good friend, Mr. Milimo, who represents the Speaker, to shoot up to his feet and protest loudly that his client is not a, vac a vacuum. Because the Constitution says, when, um, I think it is, uh, yeah, this is Article 146, Sub-Article 2, B. If the office of Deputy President is vacant, or the Deputy President is unable to assume the office of President, the Speaker of the National Assembly shall act as President, and an election to the office of the President shall be held within 60 days after the vacancy arose in the office of the President. Two things to note there. In that article, the framers of the Constitution contemplated a vacuum in both the presidency and the deputy presidency. And it is at this point where my good friend Mr. Milimo says his client, Anatosha. Maybe you'll say it. <laughs> I, I am almost certain in, in, in the event that uh, my good friend Mr. Kamodo described here a few days ago when he said the president might go to where people don't come back from, that uh, we will all say we're 